Hey, how's it going? Got a little bit of a different video for you. So I like to hang out in the garage and I used to dabble in trumpet a little bit and I inherited this old coronet. I figured I'd keep this in the garage. Only problem is neighbors don't like it at two in the morning when I'm out playing this tooting my horn. So I need a mute for it. I live in the middle of nowhere, so rather than go out and buy one, there's no mute stores by my house. I'm gonna try 3D printing one. So if you like trumpets or you like mutes or you like 3D printing, and this is the video for you. Stick around. All right, so we want to print a trumpet mute. So we go to my favorite uh, 3D repository of things, thangs.com. I'll post a link to all this stuff down below. And this isn't a sponsored video. This is just the best spot I found. And we'll type in trumpet mute. Even though it's an old coronet, I know that a trumpet mute will fit in it. And here we go. Here's a trumpet mute set of five. Let's go for that. Click on that and it takes us to printables. And here we see we got a cup mute, a harmon, a straight mute, a bubble mute, and a uh, looks like a bucket mute with some cotton balls in it. I'm going to print this harmon mute, get that cool Miles Davis sound. If peeing your pants is cool, consider me Miles Davis. So we'll click on download and click on the harmon mute. Now I'm going to open up my 3D slicer. And then we'll go to, I use Octoprint. So we'll go to Octoprint. We'll open up our file here. Pull it over to upload it. Uh, you can use an SD card. You don't have to use Octoprint. I have a bunch of Raspberry Pis that I had sitting around. So I decided to get a couple of them running Octoprint. It's great because I have a camera that I can use. Now we just click print. Now we play the waiting game. Octoprint is great. You can actually watch your 3D print um, from anywhere. I use it on my cell phone to monitor prints. It'll monitor the print for you. So if it notices spaghettification uh, or some sort of, or you run out of filament, it'll pause the print for you. Uh, you can change that settings, keep the build temperature hot or build plate temperature warm. That way your print doesn't start warping or moving on you. Uh, it's great. You can see here I got direct drive on this Ender 3 Pro. Um, that was another kit. And I have dual Z accesses or axes, axes, whatever the word is. Um, so yeah, we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. Stick around. All right, mute's all done printing. It's a day or so later. Let's uh, take it off the Ender 3 Pro, see what we got. Yeah, so printed rather nicely. Nice and firm, thick. So we've got some cleanup work to do on the bottom. So let's take it over to the workbench and finish this sucker off. All right. Let me show you. Got set up here. Let me show you how I finish these things. Um, kind of going to do something similar to what we did with this bubble mute. So after we do a little sanding on this, and I've already done some initial sanding uh, just to get some of the, the gunk off. You can kind of see. Whoops. I prefer to leave the sandpaper flat. Move the mute, and then if you got to get into the nooks and crannies, you can do that. Then after you're done sanding, just take a paper towel. And I use a little isopropyl alcohol or denatured alcohol or, you know, some sort of, you can use soap and water too, dish soap and water, just a mild detergent. You just want to get the dust off and any kind of oils that are on here. So give that a good wipe down. Get all that sanding dust off. Now I'm going to put on some gloves. Just anything chemically resistant. You don't want this, uh, this glazing putty is pretty mild stuff, but, you know, it's still a pain in the butt to clean up. So we'll put on our gloves here. And I like to just put down a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper, an old box, just to keep the old rockler mat looking good as new. Then I'm going to use this glazing putty. Uh, you can get this at uh, Walmart. You can get it in any automotive store or hardware store. Um, you can also use Bondo. Um, Bondo is a two-part. This is just a one-part, and I find this is this is good enough. Um, so just open that up, and then we'll just spread some schmoo on there. A little bit goes a long way, but I like to put it all the way around. And we'll do the bottom last. 
We'll set that off to the side, and then all you're going to do is just kind of rub it in. You're not going to completely coat it. All this is doing is filling in the low spots. I don't know if you can see there. Um, it just fills in the low spots, so any of the ridges. And all this is doing is, A, adding some bulk to give a little bit better sound, I found. A little bit better sound quality. And it also adds a little bit of a durability to it, so if you drop it, it's less likely to crack. It just gives a little bit more impact resistance. Even though this is PETG, um, I've dropped a few and cracked them as I've been experimenting with these mutes. And you're just going to rub it in, just massage it in. And if you leave any goops, that's okay. We'll sand those off. So it doesn't have to be a perfect job. doesn't have to be super clean. doesn't have to cover every square inch. You're really just trying to massage the stuff. It almost has the consistency of thin clay, kind of what it looks like too. Now that we got... Work our, work our way around. Like I said, if you leave any ridges or bumps, that's okay. This stuff sands extremely easily. And we do that. And now we'll do the sides. Do a little bit more on there. And we'll do the same thing. I like to work top down, but you can go side to side. I won't tell. And we just continue to work that in all the way around. Stuff starts to dry out pretty quickly, so you don't have a whole lot of working time, but it's plenty of time to get this done. And again, if it dries, you just sand it off. And then we'll do the, the ugly part here where we had some supports. I don't know if you need supports. I haven't tried printing without. I didn't use supports for uh, the other mutes. I just used them for the Harmon and the Bubble because they have this indentation here. Um, and when I'm printing PETG, I get a lot of stringing. Uh, with PLA, I probably wouldn't use any supports. Sorry about that. And we'll just work that in. Again, if you put too much, that's okay. If you put too little, you know, that's all right too. And I don't go inside the mute. I just tend to do the places that are easy to get to and easy to sand. And get a little bit on the edges. That's it. So now what we'll do is we'll sit that just like that to dry. Um, usually dries in about an hour. Uh, what I like to do is I'm printing something else. So I'll stick it uh, on a paper towel in my 3D printer enclosure. And it gets pretty warm in there. And it'll cure here in about a half hour. So... Once we're done with that, we'll sand it, and I'll show you what's next. All right, we're back. Uh, it's been a few hours. It's been a few hours since uh, since this stuff has been on there. We did the uh, glazing compound, so now we just got to give it a sand. I'll show you kind of what this looks like here, the glazing compound. So now it's all cured. I had it in my 3D printer enclosure while I was printing, so it's pretty cold here in Minnesota. That's pretty the only warm spot I could find. I had to bring it into the house. So yeah. A little rough around the edges, but uh, yeah, we'll give it a give it a sanding. It's got a couple different grits of sandpaper here. This one is, I think, 150, and that'll do. Say it's good enough for government work so just like before we want to take all the all the dust off so i just got a little shop towel here and i'm going to spray it with some rubbing alcohol actually i think it's denatured alcohol but i won't tell if you won't yeah we'll get our we'll wet our paper towel we're just trying to get the dust off and we also want to get a good good um surface for our epoxy to adhere to. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Even if it's got some dust on it, the epoxy will still stick. At least this epoxy will. 
And you kind of see there, now we've kind of lost. It doesn't look as brown, as uniform as it was. It's uh, a little bit mottled. I kind of like that look. Makes it look almost um, cast, or I don't know what the word is I'm looking for, but maybe I'm just lazy, but I do like the way that looks. All right. So now that we've uh, we've got it, our surface prepped, we'll get ready for some epoxy. All right. I put on some clean gloves just because I don't want to contaminate the epoxy, but uh, or the unused epoxy. So I'm using this. Alumalite uh, clear cast amazing plus epoxy with enhanced UV protection. Uh, I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. I've had it for quite a while. I think I bought it in 2019. So it's still good. I've still been using it. So it, it, I'm sure it goes bad, but it hasn't gone bad yet. So we'll keep pressing our luck. We don't need a lot of this epoxy here. Um, we just mix equal parts, part A and part B. So I just have a little measuring cup. I, I, you know, I can pick off pick up epoxy measuring cups at uh, Amazon. We're just going to use about 10 milliliters. That's probably plenty. So we'll just shake up the uh, part A. And then we'll add... I'm just going to hold this up to the light, sorry. See what we got in there. Whoops, we went a little over. I got 10 milliliters in there. So well, we'll mix 20 milliliters. And then we take our part B. And then we'll add up to the 20 milliliter line. Almost there. There we go. And now we'll give it a thorough mixing. We just use one of these little foam brushes. And it'll it'll get a little cloudy. It'll look a little milky. I don't know if you can tell there. It goes from being clear to being milky. Yeah, you just mix it up. It's got a pretty long open time, about 40 minutes, um, in a cool garage. So maybe this is where uh, being in a cold garage has helped me. But I got an infrared heater pointed right at this thing, so um, it should be able to cure overnight. So I'll just keep mixing it. And it's pretty easy. I'll just hold on to it and uh, just paint it on. I just want to get a good even coating. And what this does is it just, A, it gives it a gloss. It makes it easier for the, believe it or not, it makes it easier for the cork to stick. I had a double the time getting the uh, cork to stick to just plain PETG. So putting a coating, even if it's just the, um, the uh, casting or the, um, what do you call it, the Bondo stuff on there, the glazing putty. You know, I just... Uh, Gives a little bit more teeth to hold that uh, those adhesive cork pads. So I'll just do that. We'll do the top here. And it's going to run a little bit. You can sand it when you're done, but, you know, for a dollar worth of filament mute, I think probably the epoxy costs the most expensive part of this thing. And just get down in there. We're not hurting anything. Again, you can see it's still running. It's pretty fluid. Um, it's not as thick as that five. You could probably use five minute epoxy, but uh, or fifteen minute epoxy. The stuff you get in the the mixing tubes uh, at the big box stores. But I think that stuff is a little thick. It doesn't paint on as easily. Uh, I haven't experimented with it. Let me know what you think if you've tried it. Because it's like I said, this stuff I think you can get at any craft store, Michaels or. Or Hobby Lobby, you can order off Amazon. I'll I'll find it on Amazon. I'll throw a link on there too. And there we go. Oops, sorry about that. We got a pretty even coat. I'll just set that off to the side. 
And again, it's okay to touch it because it's all going to flow anyway. Um, I want to set this right on my rockler mat because this rockler mat uh, will the epoxy just pull, peels right off of it. So anyway, we'll let this cure overnight and uh, I think it has to cure for 24 to 48 hours. So we'll give it a day or so. You can even use a heat gun or a torch to pop these bubbles. Um, I just sand them off uh, or leave them. It doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll let this sit and uh, we'll see what it looks like when we're done. All right, it's been about 24 hours. You can kind of see a lot of bubbling with the epoxy. I used a heat gun on these just to kind of pop some of the bubbles, but there's still some remaining. I'm, again, I'm not as concerned with aesthetics as I am, just functionality. So you can sand off these bubbles. Um, now this is 600 grit sandpaper. So I'll probably just sand off the neck here just so I can get uh, some grip for the adhesive. And I'll just uh, give it the once over there. And again, I'm not as concerned with this aesthetic, so. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just want a good surface for the adhesive to stick to. And I found that the adhesive works pretty well. It holds up to the humidity. I've been using some of these for a few weeks, so. All right, so I think that's sufficiently roughed up. Let's do the top here a little bit more. Yep, and we'll clean that up here in just a second. You know, sometimes you can spend a lot of, uh, I made some of these bookends. I'm going to paint these, and uh, you know, I spent quite a bit of time sanding this down. I'll use some filler primer on something like this. Uh, you know, if I need detailed and want it to look pretty, you know, I'll spend a lot more time sanding this thing. You can kind of see, got it all smoothed out. I had quite a bit of nibs. This is PLA, but uh, I'm going to paint it white. The matching bookend. So what I'll do next is I'll just... Uh, Spray this thing down with a little isopropyl alcohol just to clean off any sanding dust and, and oils from my skin. And uh, that way the um, adhesive will stick. All right, so I got a sheet of these uh, adhesive backed coasters. Uh, I'll put a link to this stuff down below. And uh, I'll show you how I figured out. As you can kind of see here, I just cut a couple of strips. I had to double up on the strips, and uh, I didn't really was too particular with the size. I just did uh, six of those. I did the same thing with the straight mute. Again, not pretty, just functional. Um, the Harmon mute, I kind of guesstimated it a little bit, or with this bubble mute, and uh, it worked all right. It doesn't stay the best because it's just I didn't get a lot of scenes. I want to redo this one. I want to try something out here. So I got some of this thin frog tape. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some frog, cover this thing in frog tape and then use a utility knife to cut my template. See if that works. So I'll start taking off strips of frog tape here. some utility knives here so we'll cut this how we want it oh, sorry about that again I am not the arts and crafts guru here <laughs> So I think we got this uh, template fairly well traced out. And now we'll just see if we can peel this sucker off here. So I'm just gonna take a, make a incision here with the uh, X-Acto knife. And let's see if we can peel this off in one piece. Well, so far so good. Oh, 
I'm going to park that common. But hopefully we made it thick enough. Go from the other side here. All right. So that is the shape we're going to need to trace out. Let's check this out here. Oh, well, we might be able to get, yeah, no, we can't get it all in one piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut it at an arbitrary spot. Oops, not quite a through cut. And that'll work. Fold that over. We grab a sharpie here and we'll, uh, we'll well actually we don't need a sharpie we'll just do this here so just gonna stick this down right about there and then i'll stick this one right about there and now we'll just cut this out with the exacto knife Dry fit this first. Get this yellow stuff on, yellow tape. Right. Holy cow. I think we might have gotten this here. Let's try it. Oops. close enough let's give it a shot again this little hodgepodge will work I'm sure this will work famous famous last words might not be good at what i do but you gotta admire my optimism right i'm just trying to peel this off Well, heck, that looks pretty darn good. Not quite level, but hey. This is our first attempt at doing something actually decent here. I'm going to line this up as best I can. I see there is a little bit of a gap, but hey, that's all right. Oops, I think it's going on a little crooked. Let's line them up at the top corner. All right, so we're meeting up there at top. At the top, got a little bit of a gap down here, a little bit of a gap down here, but I think that's going to work. And I could probably just make a little piece of cork just to fit in the corner of that. Let's try that. So we got the got the cornet here. Wow, fits pretty nicely. Let's just uh, just see how this sounds. We'll hook the mic up to the bell. We'll see. So anyway, pretty simple. 3D printing project, combining uh, love of music. Again, a little bit of work just to make it nice, but uh, you don't have to put epoxy on it or, or coat it with uh, the uh, Bondo. You can just print them out. And, you know, again, this one I just shoved some cotton balls in there for bucket mute just to make it a little quieter. Really like it. What a good project. A lot of fun. Again, if you're uh, 
you know, if you have a trumpet section, like maybe a high school or a junior high trumpet section, and you need a bunch of straight mutes, and rather than sending your kids to get it, just find somebody with a 3D printer, and so you could probably print, um, you know, a dozen of these on a roll of filament. Uh, it didn't take maybe maybe eight or nine of these on a roll of filament. Um, you know, and I get this uh, PETG for on sale for about 13 bucks, 14 bucks a roll. So that's not bad. It just comes out to under two dollars a, a straight mute. Yeah, hope you enjoy this. Uh, I don't know how many music projects we'll do here, but if uh, if you like it, I'll I'll try some more. And um, hope you enjoyed watching. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.